Welcome back to the Shine Within podcast. Dr. Nicole D. Bradford is an energetic speaker, educator, and author with over two decades of experience in leadership roles, including professor, vice president of student services, and campus principal. As a first-generation college graduate and the youngest of six children, she has dedicated her life to empowering others to break free from societal limitations and live authentically. Dr. Bradford's upcoming book, My Soul is Not for Sale, focuses on overcoming lies, labels, and limitations. She is passionate about helping individuals shift their mindsets, nurture themselves, and embrace a life of purpose and integrity. How funny, I'm wearing my Soul Camp shirt today. <laughs> so awesome. Perfect. It's all about the soul, and I am all about souls and aligning to your soul's purpose. And so I think mm -hmm. you're an amazing guest for this show. So I just want to say thank you so much for being on my show today. Oh, well, thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm excited to be here. Of course, of course. Now, you've overcome several challenges in your life, including witnessing domestic violence as a child and facing workplace limitations. How have these experiences shaped your personal and professional journey? Well, I think personally, it's just helped me to become a stronger person. It's given me an opportunity to understand the power that I have within and not to look outside of myself for approval or for to meet the expectations that the world or different individuals may have for myself. So it's definitely helped me to become a better person, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. I'd always say look within. Outward mm -hmm. stuff is just they're just temporary, but inside our soul, it's forever. <laughs> it's, right. eternal. Right. it's eternal. It's <laughs> eternal. Now, yeah. as a first generation college graduate and the youngest of six children, I'm the youngest of four. So I know what it's like to be like the baby of the family. Yes. <laughs> You've had a unique path to success. What motivated you to pursue higher education and work with disenfranchised youth? Well, I always wanted to be in the field of education, I believe. I, um, being the youngest, I had unfortunately individuals in my life that went in and out of the criminal justice system. And I had individuals that were involved with like drugs growing up. And so my goal was to go to college and be able to connect with younger people. And that's why I went in with a double major because I wanted to open up my own school for disenfranchised youth. And my passion behind that is because I've always been with the individuals that's kind of like the underdogs, the people that are overlooked. And so I wanna inspire them and encourage them and utilize my knowledge to let them know that you don't always have to use crime or drugs to be successful. You can use your passion and education to make a difference. Absolutely. Yes. Um, growing up, there was no alcohol within my household. My mom mm -hmm. never really drank. She would just maybe drink on occasion here and there. I just started hanging around with the wrong crowd, you know, got mm -hmm. into like the rave scene and the night because I grew up in high school in the 90s. And yeah. so I was partying a lot. And I just was not surrounding myself with you know, individuals who were going to inspire me and encourage me and make sure my life was going to be good. That was up to me. And so I really yes. had to do some soul searching for myself. And it had a turning point where I'm like, you know what, it's a matter of life or death. And I wasn't religious, or I wasn't really spiritual then. But I really called out to God. And I was like, please help me. I do not want to live like this any, anymore. And no, my soul is not for sale. That's <laughs> Tell right. me the devil, right? <laughs> So in your upcoming book, My Soul is Not for Sale, I love that title, by the way, I can definitely Thanks. resonate with that. You focus on breaking free from lies, labels, and limitations. Can you go ahead and share what inspired you to write this book and what key takeaways readers can go ahead and expect when they read it? Well, I would say I was inspired by the challenges that I experienced in the workplace. And, you know, the, I believe it or not, this title has been inside of me for many, many years, and I never understood why. But, you know, as you grow up, and this book applies to all areas, it's, it applies to the workplace, it applies in the relationships that we have, as well as society as a whole. And I think that I always in my life, I truly believe that God allows you to go through things. It's not just for you, but it's to help someone else. And so my turning point was when I was in different relationships or I was in the workplace. And when I stood up for things that were not right, 
I felt like, you know, I really don't fit here. And so a lot of people want you to compromise to fit in and to be accepted. And so I'm not saying that you cannot be flexible, but you must know your non-negotiables because at the end of the day, just like you mentioned, we have to live with ourselves and we have to be with, at peace with ourselves. And so in this book, we talk about different strategies you can utilize to deal with the individuals on your workplace that may be bullies or just may be individuals that have not dealt with their youth issues that they had as a child. And so there's still that adult bully or they're that individual that tries to control others. And so I give takeaways at the end of every chapter that you can utilize to help you be successful and to create work environments where everyone has a voice and everyone counts. And in addition, in the book, I have a chapter that's talked about uh, that talks about the flush method. So when I was younger, my sister right before me, her name was Felicia. She passed at the age of 48 so unexpectedly. Sorry. Thank you. And whenever I'd have issues, she'd say, you know what, Nicole, I want you to get a piece of toilet paper. You don't necessarily have to do that part. But she said, I want you to write down everything that frustrates you things that you're angry about, but I want you to reflect on that situation. But most importantly, I want you to take responsibility for your role in that situation. Then I want you to ball it up and I want you to toss it. And flush stands for facing life's uncomfortable situation so you can heal. And so until we're able to look at our situations that we're going through on our jobs or even situation in our relationships, um, we know that as we become adults, we're going to grow and we're going to mature. You're not supposed to say the same individual that you were at 15 and 16 years old. And so sometimes it's hard to let go, but you have to understand, let's face those uncomfortable situations. Let's reflect on it, but let's move on beyond so that we can live the life that we desire. Beautiful. And I love how you use acronyms. Like my, my I have an acronym for shine. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's sobriety, healing, and also um, inspiration. And nurturing, of course, is nurturing is so dear to me. And of yes. course, empowerment. And I know the N stands for nurturing and your maintain. And I yes. know you've talked about this on other podcasts, but my listeners need to hear this because it's beautiful. Can you please go and talk about your maintain acronym and what it stands for? Yes. Well, my, the acronym maintain comes from maintain the flame. And so a lot of people ask me, why did you come up with maintain the flame? Well, the company was established because when we're younger, like we talked about earlier, we have this enthusiasm for life. We're living life to the fullest. We could care less what anybody else thinks. But as we transition into the adult world, we start to look around and we begin to conform and we lose pieces of ourselves because we want to fit in so bad. We want to be accepted. And so maintain is established so that you can maintain that flame inside of you. We were all born with a purpose and a passion. And so we just, I, my goal is just to reignite that flame inside of you so that you can live an audaciously authentic life, being true to who you are. So the M in maintain stands for mindset. It's very important that we have a positive mindset. Now, I'm not just talking about putting up the affirmations, saying the affirmations and thinking and hoping and praying that it will dramatically change our lives. But you must believe in that in that positive mindset. And you must have a growth mindset, being willing to be flexible and step outside of your comfort zone. So a growth mindset is very important. The next letter is A, you must take action. We can sit here all day and have a conversation and say, oh, you know what? I want my own podcast one day and just hope and pray that it will happen for me next week. But it's not until I get up and start taking action steps and work towards that goal will I see the results of my labor. So we must take action for any aspiration or goal that you have. It may be to own a restaurant or to open your own nonprofit. You need to write it down and have an action plan to move forward. Forward. Then the next letter is I. We must be intentional with the life that we live. Some of us just go along and we allow others to determine who we should be, or we allow others to tell us who, where we should go and what we should pursue. But you need to take time to 
connect with individuals that you admire. If you want to uh, volunteer some time to reignite that flame inside of you and see what passion you have inside, what you enjoy doing. And then you need to pursue it and be very intentional with your plan. Come up with your goals and make a step every day towards that goal so that you can be intentional with the life that you live. Then the next letter is N. We must nurture ourselves. And just like in Shine, if you're not nurturing yourself, what are you doing? Because we spend so much time taking care of everybody else. We don't pause to take care of ourselves. So you must love on yourself, nurture yourself. If it's your favorite Shine podcast you want to listen to on your way home, or if it's volunteering somewhere, or at the end of the day, just taking 30 minutes for you if you have to, after you put the children to bed but make sure that you're nurturing yourself. Then the next letter is T for tenacious. And some I say tenacious and time. I say tenacious because you gotta grab on to that goal and that dream that you have. Hold on to it for dear life. I am not going to quit until I make it. So if it's a dream to move up in your company, I'm going to have mentors. I'm going to do what I need to do to move to the next position. Or if it's to open your own relation, um, your own restaurant. But that dream, that fire inside of you, I'm going to keep working towards that and I'm never going to stop. And the other T would be, the other side of tenacious would be time. Time waits for no one. Be in the moment, be present, because the time that we have now, we're never going to see this moment ever again. So we're usually in so big of a hurry and I got to do this and I need to take care of everything else. Make sure that you're valuing your time. Then the next letter is A, authentic. We must show up authentic. We need to just look inside instead of scrolling on a TikTok all day and looking at that Instagram and, you know, I want to live like her and I want to be like that individual. You never know what people are going through. So show up and be your true, authentic self. Then the next letter is I for integrity. And that is huge for me. And I know that sometimes in the workplace, our integrity what is inside of us can sometimes make us invisible to others because a lot of people may say, oh no, she's speaking up or she's standing up for things and she's not just assimilating and going along with everyone else. But you must hold on to your integrity because that makes you unique and that makes you who you are. And then the last letter is non-negotiable. And that is so important. As I get ready to turn 50 years old, if God says the same, that is very important to me. And I've had to learn that the hard way because, you know, for so many years, I wanted to be liked and loved by everyone. And sometimes you want to just hold on to things because I got to have it in my life. But you also need to know that there may be other things that are out there that's better for you and greater for you. So you need to set up those healthy boundaries. This is what I need. This is what I expect. And you have to understand that at times we all need help. So those boundaries are important in our lives, having those non-negotiables so you can design the life that you desire. Wow. I hope our audience went ahead and took some notes because this is all very, very important and very insightful. Thank so you. thank you for that. Yes. Oh, sure. I want to go ahead and write that down and put it on a nice <laughs> on my mirror, actually, you know, oh. I like to write notes down and they maintain. <laughs> yes, yes. You got to keep pushing because it gets difficult and maintain the flame applies to all of us. You know, as parents, we have younger kids and we're so excited and we're like, oh, she's going to kindergarten. It's going to be great. But then when they move into middle school and high school as a former educator and administrator, where are the parents? You know, they tend to kind of take a back seat, but you got to maintain that flame, that excitement that you had for that baby. You have to keep it going even until adulthood, because believe it or not, they need us more in high school than they do when they're younger and maintain the flame for your life and your goals that you have and maintain that flame for your job. You start these jobs. We're excited. I start on Monday and two or three years later, we're like, ah, what else? I'm tired of this place. But that fire is in you for a reason. So just reignite that flame, believe in yourself and keep moving forward. 
Well, yes, definitely. No, I have um, three boys, two are mm-hmm. young, about 10 and eight. And then I have a 16 year old boy. <laughs> awesome. Um, yes. And it was interesting, you're saying that really, they need you more so when they're in high school. Right. Now, what in your opinion, what are some of the biggest challenges they face? And how can we actually as a society better support their growth? Well, there's a lot of challenges, unfortunately. I've worked on the collegiate level as well as K through 12th grade. And in high school, there are so many distractions and there are so many negative things that's vowing for our children's attention. And so we have to be there to check in on them that, of course, we know bullying is huge. A lot of people think that they're just being teased, but a lot of kids take that personally because they don't have the parents in the space to be able to go home and talk about the things that hurt them. And it's also the education system, making sure that you're holding, we have some amazing teachers out there, but making sure that you're walking hand in hand with the teachers through their education process, make sure our babies are learning. Not just because we we have this technology age and they're always texting, but sometimes every now and again, have them to write you a letter. Have them to do a journal for the day and you'll see their ability to spell correctly, their ability to form the paragraphs and the sentences. It's very important. And we want to set our babies up for success. And then I know this is something that parents do not want to hear, but cell phones, please, as much as you can, especially for those hardworking teachers and administrators out there, those cell phones sometimes are not our friends in the school building. It's more of a distraction. So unless they're leaving them at the front of the classroom when they walk in, I know parents want to have their kids at your fingertips at all times. But we just think if we were sitting here for 30 minutes and text messages, come to the restroom, come outside. What are you doing? Did you? It's, are you ready to eat? Like, how can they really focus? And are we giving them an opportunity to receive a quality education? So please make sure that we are on board with that. We're supporting our teachers, but also checking our kids' cell phones and their technology devices, because there are so many individuals that may be putting things on there that are inappropriate and have those uncomfortable conversations, because those uncomfortable conversations can save their lives. So being there to support them and understand it's not that important to be their friend. It's their important for you to be their advocate at this age. And you can move into that friendship as they mature and get older. I love that. Yes, I think I was guilty sometimes texting him during his class. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Yes, good point. And then I've made it a habit more like, okay, text him during his lunch break. How yes. about I just don't text him at all if it's not yeah. important? But I do like sending messages saying like, mommy loves you, thinking yes. about you for your exam. You got this. And those That's are the right. messages. Yes. <laughs> but yes, I see what you mean because I've been guilty of that. So yes, thank you for the reminder. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Now, going back to nurturing, um, you talk about the importance of protecting your time. And of course, we are nurturing. What are some of the self-care practices that you actually do to stay grounded and focus for yourself? Well, for me, I, I that is an area I need to work on, to be honest. Um, I, I, I'm like, I was a mother myself. I have three amazing children. And then you have a family of your own. So you're always busy. And then being an educator, you know, your work becomes your life. But I try to take time to just sit by myself quietly. Having my morning time is very important to me, my pre- my prayer time, because it centers me and it helps to encourage me because life can be very, very difficult. And so that morning time for me is very important. And that's for me taking care of myself because I'm reconnecting with my my source. So my prayer time is very important. And in addition to that, I will also say for me is making sure that I try to walk. And I know try is not a good word because I tell my son all the time, we don't try, we either do it or we don't, but walking getting out and try and, and moving around. So those are two things I'm working on, walking more and making sure that I start my day with my prayer time. And I think the prayer time is the most important time. That's like what I love to do. I mean, normally it's like throughout the day, I'm always talking to the mm-hmm. Lord. I'm like, please help me today. I need guidance and I'm being guided all the time. But that morning yes. routine, like you said, is like really important because it kind of sets you up for the rest of the day. 
And yes, I truly wonderful. believe so. Yes, because you know, if you think about it, like we can, none of us can live without our cell phone. Yeah. So just think about it. If you charged your phone and you never, you take it off the charger and you never charge it again and it goes dead, you're going to frantic. I need my, my charger. I got to get my connection back to the world. Well, so many of us, you know, if we don't take that time to pray and center ourselves, we can go days and days and days without reconnecting, but you wouldn't do that with your cell phone because it's so important. So that same charge that you're needed to connect with the world and to keep you going and keep you on track, we need that same personal time to keep us connected day to day. Yes, I love that. The cell phone. Mm. It's like a love and hate relationship with it. Yes, right? it is. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, we were talking about integrity too, and integrity is a major focus for you. How do you define integrity in both personal and professional contexts? And why do you think it's so important for success? Well, I think integrity for me is everything and it's going against the grain. But a lot of people, as I've shared before, it's understanding that there are consequences to having integrity, because that means you cannot just go along with everything that's going on in our world. And so unfortunately, you know, we'll see situations that occur and instead of calling the police, everyone's videoing what's happening or not stepping in or they see someone being harmed and it's easy just to pass by. Integrity for me is having the strength to stand on your own and stand on your truth no matter what the consequence is. So it may have a good or a bad outcome, but it's something that's a part of who I am. And so I, I learned that early on because as I used to teach my own children, you're in this world, but you're not of the world. And even going to college was difficult because I was at a party once and, you know, they were doing some things at the party smoking. And I was like, wait a minute, I don't even want to be here. And it was hard for me because I grew up in that environment and I was afraid that I didn't want to just become like everyone else. So I had to remove myself. And that's the same thing in the workplace. And it's big for me because when I look at the children in the school building and in the, on the college campus, I always think, would you want someone to do that to your child? Nicole, that's someone's child. And just like you're passionate about your own, if you wouldn't want them to be spoken to like that, or if you wouldn't want them to be mistreated, you must say something. And so that's always been a part of who I am. And it's not popular and it's left me left out of a lot of circles, but it's okay because at the end of the day, I'm okay being Nicole Bradford. And I know that I was able to do what was necessary instead of selling my soul to fit in. Oh, yes. Yes. You got to be true to yourself. And if it doesn't yeah. feel right, you'll you'll feel it in your body. Like you'll right. get a weird feeling, um, mm -hmm. like a hollow feeling, a sick feeling. And that means stay away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like the spirit inside you say, no, no, far no. away. <laughs> uh -huh. Now you have a strong presence on TikTok. I love TikTok, actually. <laughs> Some people don't like it. I'm like, I love it. I don't know why I to get to put all my videos on there. And I, I, yes. I used to do a lot of reels before because I used to have like this health business. I still have it, but I'm not really active in it as much. I uh -huh. have business. And so I used to do these fun reels and it was just so much fun. <laughs> now, um, how have you found social media to be a tool for sharing your message and connecting with others on their journeys? Well, I lately I have my Instagram and it's maintain the flame. The TikTok we did to just have some fun with the kids and the family uh, some time ago. And then I, I lost my mother. And so I kind of lost my desire to really do that. But Instagram um, is just the platform that I use for maintain the flame. And it's there for me to try to encourage other people because you never know what people are going through. And so I try to utilize my life as a testimony to keep others inspired and also to put positive messages out there. And I have that to be a platform in a way that I can connect with others. But I think social media, it can be, you know, it's like a love-hate relationship, but I think it is a way that we can connect a lot of people and uh, promote positive things that are going on in the world. Right. I notice. Uh, yeah, I never share all the good stuff that's going on. I always share like, hey, I'm going through some stuff right now. It's more mm -hmm. relatable. And you go, yeah. people will respond to that more so than you're sharing. Oh, I got a new car. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> like we, we just got new vehicles, but I don't 
promote that stuff because no, they're just vehicles. No. They're just there to get me from A to B. Okay. Exactly. I'm grateful that I have it, but I don't, it's just things. I don't mm -hmm. like things. Yes, yes. <laughs> I like interactions. I love community. I love uh, energy, love positivity. Like I, I love right. that. That's what counts. You know, I always mm -hmm. say life hacks you should have is compassion, forgiveness, love, mm -hmm. empathy, yeah. all of those uh, gratitude. Those are just mm -hmm. all life hacks that we should all carry within us. And so, ah, yes. But Dr. Bradford, what is next for you in your journey for helping others live audaciously authentic? And how can our <laughs> listeners go ahead and connect with your work? Well, they can find me on, I have a website. It's www.maintaintheflame.net. And then I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, as well as Instagram. And it's the same, Maintain the Flame, all one word. And next is just my, uh, for me to focus on traveling, connecting with schools and families, uh, being that I want to utilize my two decades of experience in the field of education for families that need help navigating the education system, because it can be difficult at times, connecting with empowerment conferences, and then going international nationally with the message, because I think it's very important that people understand that you have to accept who you are, stand on your truth and design the life that you desire. Yes, I love that. Well, thank you so much for being on my show today. Anything that I've missed or do you wanted to share? Well, no, I just want to keep people encouraged and let them know that if it's someone out there to please check on each other keeping each other encouraged. We are all going through difficult times, but understand that there is power in your position. And if it's difficult right now, that's not gonna last always. So reignite your purpose and find that passion within so you can have an audaciously authentic life. Beautifully said. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it.